Hello and welcome, I'm Raziel, and this is the second part of the Golden Throne, like, mini series, whatever you want to call it. And I've got to sort of start on a tangent first, because it will make sense later. Well, kind of. But what a lot of people don't actually realise, or they might not even know, is that the Imperium has a thriving tourist economy. I know, it's in the 40k millennium, it's in the grim dark. Tourism? Holidays? This doesn't make sense. Well, it kind of does too. Well, they're not holidays as me or you will see them. You know, coach tours, theme parks, you know, flying away and all that. They are basically pilgrim pilgrimages. And it's basically, and that's what it is. It's people hire rogue traders. You often get large groups of them and they will fly from planet to planet. Where, you know, sacred sites, shrines etc etc all you know are and the pilgrims go and see them it's to you know affirm their faith in the emperor and even sometimes it's archaeological you know they have an interest in the history no matter how much it's been redacted by the inquisition so yeah there's this tourist trade within the for uh, imperium which is quite uh, good it's very good actually uh, rogue traders often take them because of the good money it brings in also there is a the slight trouble that Gene Steelers find these very convenient ways of going around, and same with Gene Steeler Colts. The rogue trader ships, especially the cargo holds, aren't that secure. Anyway, so we have this thriving trade, and it's fantastic how it works. And what do you think the biggest tourist attraction in the 40k, 40K millennium? The 41st millennium is? Well, it's the Eternity Gate. It's the Golden Throne itself. That is the biggest tourist attraction out of all of the tourist attractions there though it does ask the question is there a gift shop on in the palace of terror in the imperial palace like do they have t-shirts saying i went to see the golden throne but all i got was this lousy t-shirt sort of thing you know, mugs keychains and all that anyway i i, I divert so like i said there is a big tourist uh, economy and the biggest tourist attraction being the eternity gate to the point that people are literally queuing up for years. As they literally have servitors and people who will drag dead bodies out of the line because that's how long people wait. Do you, also, do you think they have like hot dog sellers walking up and down, going hot dog, hot dog, you, you know, to, to feed people? I, I think there's, they do actually have volunteers to feed the people while they're queuing up as well. I think that's actually canon. I'm not 100%, but like I said, tourist attraction, big one, golden throne. And this is where this interesting bit comes in. And this is how it ties in. That's not the golden throne they're seeing. That's that's a fake one. That's that's not a real one. That's fake. I know there's inquisitors who said, I've been to the Eternity Gate. I've seen the golden throne and I felt its power. Yeah, you probably have. You're in the Imperial Palace. There's a lot of psychic power about. about. At least a couple of thousand just with the psychers for that day let alone the rest of the week. So you could, let's say they stock up a week ahead in advance, there's at least 7,000 psychers, uh, plus the Emperor, who is in the Imperial Palace, but just not there. And by the way, there is a source for this. It was John Blanche himself who said that image that we see, the one you're seeing now, isn't the Golden Throne, it's not the Emperor. Now, I was thinking about this, and this is when it really struck me, I went, hang about, this is quite good. This is very clever, and it makes a lot of sense for this to happen because no matter how low the chances of a bad person getting in and, you know, taking a shot at the Emperor, they may be slim with all the security, but it's never zero. And given the large amount of people who are there, it's probably almost guaranteed it's happened at least once, if it's not once a day sort of thing. And then the other thing I did want to mention is People are going to want to touch it and gold erodes. It doesn't like erode as you know, but like with just friction. And you can see this like in Parliament on the shoe of Winston Churchill, I believe it is, and his shoe is shiny because people touch it for good luck. There's also a bronze statue lying down, and people believe that rope in his crotches will get you pregnant. So that's quite worn down now. As like I said, a lot of people are going to do this and they're going to see it and they're going to try and do it. So you're going to get erosion. And it's going to cause, a, you know, it can cause some issues. But like I said, that's what people are going to see and that's what they see. So they see the Golden Throne, they see the Skeletal Emperor, and they go, hey, that's the Emperor. And they're very happy. They, their faith has been affirmed. They've seen the Emperor. They go about praising the Emperor for the rest of their life. 
And of course, like I said, there's a security issue. And like I said, people are going to take a shot at the Emperor. They'll probably, as soon as they pull the gun out, end up dead. But you never know, there would be a chance that someone got through. Let alone rogue psychers, chaos, chaos worshippers. There are so many people who could probably get through, and probably do get through, just for that alone. Now, to the point I made, that's not the Emperor. That's not the Golden Throne, that's not the Emperor. And like I said, John Blanche confirmed this, because he's in a different room. And just not on security reasons alone, but there's also the effect he has on people, and people who see him. Now we have to go back to the Age of Apostasy for this one, and Gogan dies death. So, just before Gogandar dies, Elisa Dominica is taken to one side by one of the custodies and shown the true Emperor. And the Emperor speaks to her, her hair turns white, and she comes out and kills Gogandar. That's the story, as simply put. And I want you to... What really makes this stand out is her hair turns white. If that's an effect on a normal person. Don't forget, sisters about or not gene, uh, gene altered. They're not superhuman. They are just normal women in power armor. If the original the one at the Eternal Gate, that everyone goes and sees, there would be a lot of white hair along Magnum Imperium. I wouldn't say it was a hundred percent common, like everyone has it, but it would be a noticeable amount for people to see it. So we have that, and then of course, the Emperor's not really dead. He wouldn't be a skeleton, he's kept alive. And if you're kept alive in sort of um, like on life support, your body's still doing what it needs to do at a very low level, which means it's still alive. And it's not going to start rotting and turning into a skeleton at this point. It's still going to be, oh, it'll be emasticated, don't get me wrong. It, you know, 10,000 years of sitting on your butt is going to cause severe muscle entropy. And so he's going to be skeletal looking as a description but as a human being he will still have flesh he'll still have like his body you'll still be able to see him as a human but not but it'd be like a very rivered skeleton a kind of like golem he'll be looking like golem at this point yeah <laughs> golems on the golden throne looking at the chaos looking at the warp going my precious and so that's the other thing as i said there's also the security of it not just unto the emperor if People knew where the real true emperor was. Like I said, there would be chaos worshippers going to the eternity gate, probably getting through. But that's the only amount of attacks. Terra's been attacked several times, don't get me wrong. We've had the orc invasion. Gene stealers have got on there, probably because of rogue traders. And quite lately, we've had a corn demon invasion. If they were 100% aware, demons probably are, but if they were 100% aware, they would know exactly where to go. They wouldn't attack the Eternity Gate because they would know that wasn't it. But the Eternity Gate's also the diversion for every for the normal Golden Throne, the real one. And so there you go. Like it, I was looking at this and I was trying to make this video at least ten minutes long. And it's been very difficult because I could got to this point right at the start. Hey, there's a second Golden Throne. Why? Security. And. Also, we're going to rely on a lot of world leaders, especially ones who are quite tyrannical or in dictators, tend to have body doubles. And that would also make sense, a body double so would make a lot of sense. And I was also thinking about the sh bit sh uh, being shot bit, because that can be used to demoralise anyone else in the queue. Oh look, he got a shot and it cracked the Emperor's skull. Close the date gates, five minutes, replace the skull. There you go, open up again. Oh look, it did nothing. So any other one trying to do something will realise their task was futile, because it's quickly repaired. And then finally, if that is the real, like the fake golden throne, if that was a real one, people do notice when things aren't working right. You, you can see something, you go, yeah, that's not working right. And if they saw the golden throne slightly, looks like it's malfunctioning, even like the odd spark or something not going right, it will hurt the Imperium in the long run because it's going to cause a panic within their faith. Oh my god, the golden throne's failing. Where in a second one, Having this one in the background, which no one can see, and only you know the special people can see, people who are invited literally to see it, can see. They're not going to fake their, their religion is not going to be faulted because they've been taken to see the emperor by a custodian, like the highest of the high. So when they're saying like you've got to be careful here, you're going to be speaking to the emperor. They're going to see a fault, but it's not going to be in the massive numbers that you know the tourists will see for the other golden throne. 
So there you go. There's two God of Thrones. Confirmed by John Blanche. And yeah, thank you very much for watching. Now, what do you guys think about this? Do you think it's a cool theory? Do you think it's cool? And I'd like to see how you have your thoughts. Like I always do. I like it when you guys have these conversations down below. I read all your comments. I really do. And, you know, same rules apply. I don't delete nothing. I don't block anyone. So yeah, carry on ahead. What are your thoughts? Links down below for Wayland Games, as always. If you wish to save 20% on your Warhammer. Um, and free delivery off the £20. There is also Forbidden Planet. If you like comics, manga, DVDs, plushies, toys. All the cool stuff. Uh, my comic. If you want to see Red Riding Hood. Kick the sh poop out of Cyborg Werewolves. I've really got to continue this. I'll do another book with her, actually. I've just got to think what to do. I've got a big bad in mind and everything. And then there is my merchandise cups, t-shirts, stickers. You know what everyone else says. I do it too. And thank you. Right, so anyway, final point. This is probably going to be one of the few videos I do this week. I might not even be doing any shorts. And not even gaming shorts either. Like, I'm going to be away next week. So I'm getting this video out done, scheduled it done and ready. So, there you go. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.